working in Germany. Uh, but uh, to give you a, a, a kind of a snapshot, in about 18 years of ministry, which is the last time we got numbers, this is a few years ago, we don't have to be there anymore because it's completely run and operated by Bojpuri Christians. In 18 years of ministry, there were 80,000 churches planted and over 2 million baptized believers among the Bojpuri. We don't pay a single one of those pastors. None of those pastors are paid by foreign money. Most of those pastors are bivocational. Those churches were all planted by Bojpuri peoples. That's kind of amazing, you know? But when I think of the God of David, the King of Israel, who allowed him to break the back of Goliath with a stone, I'm not thinking that that is actually that amazing. I think that it was in his plan all along. And that he wanted to do it with a missionary who failed enough times so that he would receive glory and honor. Because this is not a story about David Garrison or a story about David Watson or a story about Southern <clears throat> Baptists or a story about missionaries. It's a story about God having a heart for people yeah. and saying, I'm sick and tired of them being shackled by Satan. Yeah. Of course, some might say, perhaps that was just a special dispensation of God's grace upon, upon the Bojpuri at that time because he wanted them released. And perhaps it was a movement meant for them, but, but maybe it's just not time for us. Well, that's interesting because I believe that God has a missionary heart and that he wants to reach all people. And the idea that he would win some over here and win some over here and win some over here is complete rubbish. When you read Acts or any of the other parts of the New Testament. And so you might say, well, maybe those strategies only work among Hindus. They don't work among other peoples in the world. And my father, a few years ago, about seven years ago now, I believe, ended up joining forces with an organization called City Team Ministry and became, became their vice president of global church planting. I also work with City Team Ministries as city director of, of Portland, Oregon, and a church planting coach around the world. But uh, he became part of them, and together they decided they were going to work in the Horn of Africa and the Sub-Saharan Africa regions, all the way over to Ethiopia, all, I'm sorry, from Ethiopia, all the way over to Sierra Leone and Cote d'Ivoire. Predominantly Muslim peoples, okay? And in the last uh, seven years of ministry, and guys, numbers are hard to get in Africa, so I'm going to give you the last reported numbers. We go back and we try to verify them all the time. So you're going to see them decrease and sometimes when we get new reports and we realize that churches that have been started may not be in existence anymore because of persecution or maybe that we find out that someone had lied, which, which happens every once in a while. We always get accused of, of like fabricating numbers sometimes because it does that, but we would rather them change to be accurate than to report one and say, this is it no matter what. Does that make sense? Because we really are trying to be better about that and make sure that numbers are being reported accurately. And we go in and, and do reports and surveys all the time. We have external organizations come in and do reports and surveys all the time. So we're really trying to be accountable that way. But the last, current, the last numbers I had said that in seven years of ministry, we had started 14,000 churches in sub-Saharan Africa representing over 300,000 believers, and 70% of those believers were from Muslim backgrounds. Some of the hardest people in the world, supposedly, to reach. But I believe that our God is stronger than Islam. Yeah. 